patterns of oppression and privilege are rooted in systems that we all participate in. Those patterns are built into paths of least resistance that we feel drawn to follow every day, regardless of whether we think about where they lead or the consequences they produce. Privilege is an unearned benefit that is afforded to one group at the expense of another. Privilege leads to hegemony, which allows the dominant group to impose their ideologies on other minority groups. Some people have asked, what have I learned about disability? Well, let me lay out some truth. Oppression, it's socially constructed to give power to a few. At its root, the term disability says, let me separate one group from another. We neglect and push down when really we were made for each other. But wait, how can they ever be normal or even act as they should? Often the greatest blessings occur when unwanted things are chosen as good. My dictionary tells me that disability is what stands in the way of true life and happiness. Oppression becomes day to day. Society has constructed binaries which categorize and segregate people based on their ability. Uh, I use the term disabled people quite deliberately because I subscribe to what's called the social model of disability, which tells us that we are more disabled by our bodies, by our, the society that we live in rather, than by our bodies and our diagnoses. This is perpetuated in language, signage and social institutions. Like when I was younger, I know that I was scared when a child was different just because I didn't understand. And I only had exposure to them through elementary school, through bits and pieces, but they always kept them secluded from everyone else. So that made me scared of them. I don't want to be seen as a disabled person taking part in athletics. I want to be seen as an athlete. These images out there, you know, you might have seen the one, the little girl with no hands, drawing a picture with a pencil held in her mouth. Uh, you might have seen a child running on carbon fibre prosthetic legs. Um, and these images, you know, there are lots of them out there. They are what we call inspiration porn. <laughs> and I use the term porn deliberately because it, they objectify one group of people for the benefit of another group of people. So in this case, we're objectifying disabled people for the benefit of non-disabled people. Every man, woman and child will bow down to me. Soon, the world's banks will crumble. The doomsday virus will be released. Soon you'll know the true meaning of pain. <laughs> <laughs> It is not enough to simply recognize inequities, nor is it enough to recognize stereotypes. Instead, we must reflect on the epistemology of how those stereotypes and inequities came to be. We must assess the systems that allow them to be perpetuated, and we must reflect on how privilege has led to the current hegemonic view of disability in society. Only then can we begin to be allies. Disability doesn't make you exceptional, but questioning what you think you know about it does. Thank you.